All right. Shalom, shalom to the elect of nation of Israel. With the brothers here from GMS Land Church doing a, a, a quick lesson through the spirit. Um, before we get started, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem Chakwadash. Double honors to our apostles, our elders of Great Millstone, who lead teaching real well. Love and honor to our fellow Aki, pushing the word in true faith and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, those who sincerely listen to the men and doctrine of Great Millstone. Um, uh, Lord willing, you'll see it in the, uh, the title, um, of the lesson, uh, in which this, the title of this lesson is, is no more Washington Redskins. Okay. Because, um, you know, the, the, the so-called Native Americans we know and believe to be, uh, Israelites, uh, particularly of the tribe of Gad, you see, and, um, you know, that, that name, that moniker, uh, Washington Redskins is actually a, a derogatory term. And, you know, it's a, it's a byword. And it's um it's a covering or uh, a classification uh, of our people, man. That's not an uh, 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 accurate, you know. That, like I said, they're, they're uh, the so-called Native Americans um, are Israelites, man, of a tribe of Gad. And there's a um, there is a a movement right now uh, that's that's finally uh, uh, getting traction to a uh, uh, change for for the ownership of the uh, the that team to uh change their name and their moniker so without further ado you know we got, we got a few uh you know our brothers here from our church from our camp we're gonna hit this lesson um and lord will you edify through spirit and power of your house by shimmy house shot uh somebody get that deuteronomy 28. this is uh deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 36. it reads the lord shall bring thee in thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known and there shall serve other gods wood and stone continue on wait wait and thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb and a byword among all nations whither the lord shall lead thee yeah and that includes uh the tribe of gad man you know like i said uh slide this on the video uh that in that includes the tribe of gad you know what I'm saying? Uh, the the so-called uh, Native, uh, Native Americans, the Native Indians, in which one of the bywords they're commonly called is uh, Native American or Indian. They are not truly Native Americans. They are the tribe of the tribe of Gad, man. You see, and uh, um, a, a part uh, um, uh, of the land in which uh, our people were driven that, uh, uh, you know, they were pushed, you know, through prophecy to serve other gods, you know, other uh, uh, gods, other idols, even wood and stone, it's here in America, man. You know, continue on. Continue on, it says, verse 38. It says, Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather. Oh, you're at 36 and 37? Yeah. It's like, read 37 one more time. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Right. And a part of that astonishment, you know, you know, a lot of times people look at, you know, uh, uh, Judah, you know what I'm saying? Because Judah is the head tribe of our nation, you know what I'm saying? And, and put a certain moniker on them or a certain uh, uh, term or, or byword or, or, or stereotype of stigma on Judah. You know, because of the head tribe, and you know that's uh, really a part of Esau's um, systematic oppression is to uh, really, um, you know, downplay the the importance of Judah. But also included in that is also all the other tribes, man, including Gad. You know, what I'm saying, in which, like I said, that 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 term Indian, you know, or really, you know, goes back to uh, being a savage or a beast. That's a byword, man, because they're not Indians. Okay, they are of the tribe of Gad. They're they're Israelites, man. Was it in on that a little more? Uh, yeah, that was mainly the point. Does anybody have anything? Yeah, I got some real quick. You got it. All right, this is um, Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. So he saw the so called white man has that veil over the nations, especially our people. You know, but uh, especially with this football team, you know, calling them the Redskins when he's actually the the, the red fellow, according to uh, was it Genesis twenty five? 
So he's the real red skin. But that's just the uh, deception that Esau has put, especially here in America, by calling the so-called Native Americans uh, uh, red skins. Mm-hmm. That was it on that. It's like my, my mic was muted. Anybody have anything else? Uh, I got a quick one. Come on, hit it. Come on, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 13. It says, uh, therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that you know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other powers day and night, wherefore I will not show you favor. You know, so this is the, ultimately this is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, that's causing all this to happen, because uh, you brought out the first precept in, um, in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, which is which is the curses that's being brought upon the Israelites for not obeying the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. So here we are, you know, in the year 2020, we're still having, you know, these uh, professional teams, you know, still, you know, putting up a fight to save, uh, to save a name that's derogatory to the uh, Israelites, man. Mm-hmm. You know, right. our brothers got it. Con, con, hey, it's uh, Anybody have anything else? No, oh, I got one. Con, bring it. This is Hosea chapter one, and in verse ten, it says, "Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power." Con, and I wanted to bring that out because this proves that the uh, so-called Native Americans are the Israelites, man, because they're under the curses. And it says in the land where it said, you are not my people, that they, they're not calling uh, the so-called Native Americans by their true name, which is Gad. They're, they're calling them uh, bywords, man, or, or redskins, tomahawks, you know, all these different uh, uh, bywords, man. Yeah. And, but their true, their true name is Gad, man, of the tribe of Israel. All right. Con, that was it. Con, con. Hey, uh, your pa, I can, uh, brothers, remember, if you're not speaking, to put your uh, mic on mute, Baba Pusha. That's the downplay, the, the, the reverb, Baba Pusha. Oh, yeah, con. Con, um, con yeah, it's a wild, I can, uh, beautiful. Um, so real quick, I'm a well willing share this screen. Let's see. Give me one second. All right, and I want to um, go on to this uh, this article right here because this uh, you know this whole controversy as far as uh, the the Washington uh, football American football club you know and, and this uh, and their nickname and moniker the Redskins this is uh, this is nothing new man this, this is a fight and battle and discussion that's been going on. For decades, man. So, um, you know, Fair Use Act, you know, we're not using this for, we're using it strictly for educational purposes, but uh, I'm just going to play this video and see what it, see what they say. Adam, what's the latest you're hearing about the Redskins? Matt, the Redskins have been in discussions with the NFL. You mentioned the fact that this also is a money decision and FedEx wanted the Redskins to change the name Nike seemingly pulled the merchandise off its website. And the other big sponsor of the Washington Redskins is Pepsi. We were waiting to hear from Pepsi. It has not said anything publicly just yet, but obviously it seemed like that was going to be the third domino that was going to fall. And if you've got your three big sponsors all showing resistance to you continuing on with a name that in these times seems very insensitive, then it looks like change must come and when the redskins make that announcement this morning matt that say they're going to have a thorough review of their name you don't make that announcement unless you intend to make a change change is coming to washington i do not expect that team to be called the redskins this season and now the only question that remains is what will they change the name to because it won't be washington redskins in 2020 you see that? Adam, what's the latest you're hearing Hold about the Redskins? You see that right there? The you see, like I said, this article right here is from um, uh, ESPN.com. Um, 
from a few days ago, July 3rd, 2020, the year of prophecy. And it's entitled Washington Redskins nickname has been under scrutiny for decades. Because like I said, this whole topic and controversy, it's, uh, it's, this is not anything new. This has been going on for, for decades, man. I'm just going to read a few uh, bullet points uh, from this article. Once again, Fair Use Act, you know, we're not uh, aiming to make any profit off of this uh, this uh, this uh, lesson or this video. This is only for educational purposes. Um, it says, the Washington Redskins nickname has been mired in controversy for decades. Former team owner Jack Kent Cook said in 1988, it's going back to the, the late 80s. And, you know, who was to say it didn't, um, it was a conversation about this even before that. It says, former team owner Jack Kent Cook said in 1988, there is not a single solitary jot tittle with chance in the world. See that? That's pride, man. There is not a single solitary jot tittle with chance in the world that the Redskins changed their nickname. I like the name and it's not a derogatory name. You see, it says a few years later, protesters picketed against the nickname at the Super Bowl following 1991 season. So I just want to bring that um, article real quick. Slacky. Um, I just want to bring the article real quick because, you know, it goes to show you that this is a fight that, um, you know, and and this and this is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh uh, Shai shoring up and and, and uh, closing the breaches in the divisions of our people, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you got Esau Edom, who um who a, a big part of his strategy is to separate the, the the tribes, man. You see, but this fight that's been going on since, uh, as far as we know, or as far as we can uh, say right now, at least uh, from the pat uh, from the late '80s, it's 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 finally getting traction because. This is another uh, a sign and tell that Esau Edom's uh, rulership and control um, on the world and his uh, his dominion and rulership is, is quickly falling, man. It's being cast down as lightning. And from from it's been a fight that's been going on for decades to now. Um, FedEx, one of the, the the main sponsors of the uh, the Washington American Football Club, because uh, even their field, I believe, is uh, FedEx Field, and they're one of their their, their main. Um, uh, sponsors, they were like, "Listen, man, y'all gotta change our name, man, because the whole the the whole climate and the structure of the earth is is uh being turned right side up. Things have been turned upside down for far too long, and now is the time in which how about you how shy? Something it's something that's uh uh simple, possibly or symbolic as uh, the, the 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 change of the name of this uh football club is showing that uh, uh things are being turned right side up, man. Yeah, hey, I got, uh, you got I got Time. This is uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter thirty and verse seven. It says, "And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee." So, like uh, the officer was going into, and we'll see. We're basically seeing Esau back against the wall, man. You know, from uh, 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 from Judah, from Gad, from Is well, Issachar. You know, they're still kind of, you know, being simple right now, but it's going to be a, a, a certain point in time where like, all 12 tribes is going to, uh, you know, be pressing Esau, man. And his back is going to be, hey, and this is just the beginning, man. And you also had uh, where, uh, which we were just kind of talking about it before we come to screen, the stream, but uh, the NBA, you know, they're set to start up uh, at, the end of July, at the end of July, and they are, they are allowing players, to put uh, certain stuff on the back of their jerseys, like Black Lives Matter, you know, or George Floyd, you know, certain, you know, uh, you know, names on the back of their jersey to represent, you know, uh, Israel, man, which basically shows you that Jake is is just taking over, man, you know, and it's, it's going to eventually be more and more to where it's not going to be simple stuff as such as, you know, even though this is a big deal, you know, such as, you know, changing uh, uh, the name of, the, of an NFL team is going to be Esau has to be put to death, man. You know, you, you got it. Y'all got it. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, you might got anything else? Yeah, I got some. Hit him. This is uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, said the Lord that doeth this. See, and so like the brothers speak about, you know, for, for the Lord, and the Lord is doing all these things, man. 
You know, he's bringing all these things to the East. Like you see them tearing down the idols in these other uh, locations throughout the world. You know, he's bringing these things against Esau, but to raise up the children of Israel, he has to bring Esau down. You know, and ultimately, you know, that's that's prophecy. That's what's, that's what's coming to happen. You know, and then Edom being our top, the so-called white man being our top enemy, man, along with other nations, you know, that have been made mockery with the name of the Redskins, man, for an example. You know, just this, this uh offended, you know, uh the Lord's the Lord's uh, anointed, man, you know. But con, that's all I had on that. I got something else. Um, this is uh Proverbs uh 18 and 14. The spirit of a man sustained his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear it, and the spirit of Esau. It's windy right now, you know, with the football team trying to change his name. You know, you got these Karens running around going crazy. You know, Esau, these statues are getting taken down. This this man's spirit is wounded, man. And, but he, at the end of the day, all right, he's he's a sore So we, what is, his only choice is is to come down on Jake, uh, uh, Isaiah fifty nine and nineteen. You know, and then on top of the, all of this, you had this in fact. Um, um, this in fact meeting at Stone Mountain, you know, basically right up the street from here. And you saw you don't think you saw seeing that and getting and getting revved up in the spirit. You know, it's it's it's, it's time for uh you know these things to, t to transpire. People, you know, our people see these things, but they don't understand the full scope of things. They they see it and they were like, well, you know, okay, you know, you know, power to the people and all this other stuff. But they don't see that this devil is gonna be coming down because he has a short period of time. Ah, God. Anybody got anything else? God, I got something. Bring it. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 31. It says, Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord, the Lord power of hosts, for thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee. All right. And I want to get that because Esau is the most proud, man. Like after everything they did together, they're going to make a, a, a football team called, called uh, the Redskins. That just shows you how proud this damn devil is, man. And and the scriptures uh tell you how much the Lord hates a proud man. So so Esau Esau Esau's days are numbered, man. And uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get verse thirty two. It says, "And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up." For uh, and it says, "And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him." All right. So the Lord's are getting ready to destroy America, man, because this place was built on wickedness. It says the, it says the city that's talking about America, man, the, uh, the the city of Babylon. All right, like Ben, like Benjamin be saying in, in uh in their music, uh, Babylon gonna burn, man. You know, that's all I have. Con, con, anything else? Con. Uh, it's like it. So real quick, I'm gonna share the screen again and get this last little bit. Give me one second. All right. Uh, from that same article, this is um, from ESPN.com. It says May 22nd, 2014, 50 senators signed a letter protesting the name. So this go back uh, six years, man. You see. Um, and during this period, this is a period in which, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama was in office in which Barack Obama was really um, set up to be a trap for our people. But it ended up. Like the scripture say, man, all things work for the good for those who believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shine, trust in this doctrine, man, trust in these words, man. Uh, let's say May 22nd, 2014, 50 senators signed a letter protesting the name. 50 senators, all Democrats, signed a letter to the NFL saying to Washington that Washington should change its nickname. The letter, the letter stated the NFL can no longer ignore this and perpetuate the use of this name as anything but what it is, a racial slur. We urge the NFL to formally support a name change for the Washington football team. We urge you in the National Football League to send the same clear message as the NBA did, that racism and bigotry have no place in professional sports. The NFL issued a release to the New York Times defending the name. See, you saw it once again at the brother uh, Kabari Call said, man, these devils are proud, man. The NFL issued a release to the New York Times defending the name. The intent of the team's name has always been to present a strong, positive, and respectful image. The statement read, read, read. The hey, name is not. What's up? Salaki, if I could just throw in real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on. Out of, out of uh, you know, all the sports, 
the uh, NFL and the owners is the most, uh, they put out the most uh, racist, you know, uh, or, or, or they show that they're against uh, so-called uh, Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans out of all sports, man. And it's, and that's a known fact, you know, that the NFL owners don't give a damn about their players, man. You know, you got, I just wanted to make that statement. Hey, Con, Con, yeah, hey. Uh, in football and NFL, it's like a real, it's like a real plantation, man. It's like a real deal fucking plantation. Like, they want the biggest, strongest, fastest bucks they can find, man. You know? Uh, just let me share the screen one more time to finish this point out. All right, so this finishes last paragraph. It says, uh, the intent of the team's name has always been to present a strong, positive, and respectful image, the statement read. The name is not used by the team or the NFL in any other context, though we respect those that view it differently. And that's bullshit, man. You see what I'm saying? That's bullshit because they don't they don't respect those who view it differently because if they did, they would they would stop using that name. And that name is derogatory term like we brought out in Deuteronomy 28 it's it's a byword man because the the tribe of gad they're not native americans they're they're damn sure not redskins man all right they are of the nation of israel man they are of the tribe of gad anything other than that is derogatory man anything other than that is uh is a slur it's it's not it's not correct and it's not respectful of who they truly are through the spirit for uh with that being second and brother really quick for me uh Bob Shah get psalms 69 um and 22 because i want to i want to bring that point because um we just mentioned the point of how the uh even these politicians and that's spiritual that's spiritual too because it's washington it's it's the the, the capital the you know the, the the capital of this country so to speak and they even have politicians who was like yo get rid of his name and that was six years ago man you see somebody got that yeah con um Psalm 69 and 22, let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. And something as uh, simple as, you know, this this name, okay, uh, what this uh, professional football club goes by, you see, even even the um, uh, the politicians of this society put it on paper, man, like, yo, that's not right, man. It's, it's, it's derogatory. It's, it's creating a rift and a um, division in this country. You see, it says, uh, let that table become a snare before them. You see, so that name that really um, was a continuation of the division within our people has now come full circle to become a snare unto them because now with the tribe of God and for people who um, are aware of the situation, they're going to say, well, if they're not Native Americans or Indians or Redskins, who are they? And we're here to proclaim that they are Israelites, man. That they are the tribe of Gad. Mm -hmm. Anybody got anything else? Con, I got something. It's I wanted to get a uh, scripture from the brother uh, out of Memphis, Calabria. Uh, oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, what scripture? I'm, I'm going to pull it up. Oh, it's uh, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 15. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. i seen that. Hold on one second. Bye, okay. There you go. All right. This is uh, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 15. It reads for the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shmiah Shai is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done, it shall be done to thee. Thy reward shall be returned upon uh, upon thy own head. So yeah, that in that in that priest, that's a good precept concerning the topic, you know, and with concerning uh Genesis chapter 49. You know, when, when it reads well, uh Gad, uh the truth shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last, you know, and that's a, and that's a coherence with the Israelites as well, man. We the Israelites will get payback for it. that's according to the Bible, man. Payback is coming unto upon all nations outside the Israelites and definitely upon the uh, so-called white man Esau Edom. Okay, or it said return upon your own head. Revenge is, is revenge is, is righteous according to the Bible, man. And that's what's going to happen sooner or later. Okay, let me give, let me give verse sixteen real quick. It says, "For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, see, and what's what's the Lord's holy mountain? The nation of Israel. Okay, it reads, so shall all the heathen." Drink continually, continually, yeah. They shall drink and they shall swallow down, and this shall be as thou they had not been. See, <laughs> you know, that's how through y'all the other nations are going to be, man. And that's how that's how that's how uh, uh, on top we're going to be. It's going to be like they're not even living, man. You know, it's going to be there's going to 
whatever war is going to, it's going to overflow, man. You know, that punishment is coming for these other nations. And it's, and we're the Lord's mouthpiece. That's all, that's all we have. We have to bring these certain accounts out, such as the wipes of Redskins, because the other nations have to be warned and they have to get their judgment, man. That's right. And that's what, that's what we got to do with the prophets, you know? That's right. I got something right quick. Not only brother that have everything. Hey, uh, uh, brothers, get the precept and we'll get some precepts off the common board. Yeah, so we, we are we are identified who the uh, so-called Native Americans are. All right, that derogatory term that they call the Redskins, but they're really Hebrew Israelites. Let's let's establish who the real uh, Redskin is. This is uh, Genesis twenty-five. I'm gonna just jump to um, uh, twenty-three. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elders are and the elders shall serve the younger. Verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right, now Esau is the uh, father of uh you so-called white people, all right, you so-called uh Caucasians, all right, you, uh, you are Dumians, all right. And uh verse 26, and after that came his brother out. Slocky. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. So like the brother Shemak was saying, all right, uh, Esau's, Esau's rulership is over with, man. Jacob is holding on that heel of Esau even right now with this whole uh, the change of the name in the stadium. But Esau, he's the real red skin, all right? When, when he, he's out in the sun, which is his worst time of year, the summertime, he turns red. If he blushes, he gets red. So he's the real uh, uh, risking. All right, he's not. It goes to mention that when Jacob came out, he he, he was the color of the, of the people on the face of the earth. They were brown skin. So how the hell could the so-called Native Americans be redskins? That 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 uh, proverb and byword is probably most likely going to be given to Esau in the kingdom of heaven because he's going to be under the curse of Deuteronomy thirty and seven. Con, con, con. Anybody anything else? Con, I got something. Hey, hold, hold, hold one second. Oh, uh, now. Uh, Thwada, Shema. Go ahead, Kabar. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 1. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, that dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. All right? And that's talking about, uh, like the brother was saying, you so-called white people. You self-proclaimed white people, which are really red, man. That's why. Uh, that's why you're the Edomites. The word Edom means red. All right. This is this is speaking about about you. You, you dealt with treacherously with the so-called Native Americans, man, which which is a tribe of Gad. All right. You dealt with treacherously. And uh, I'm reading on. It says, "When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee." So that's what's coming to you, to you damn devils, man. You dealt you dealt uh, treacherously with, with the twelve tribes of Israel. So uh, it's the Jake, Jake is about to deal treacherously with you, man. And and, uh, and when we get when we get in power, when how about Shemal Shah puts us in power, man? We're gonna deal treacherously with you, devils, man. All right, for what you did to us. All right, uh, that, that's yeah. Yeah. You, got, you got some uh, officer out? Uh, no, I just wanted to add on to the uh, the brother point. You know, because, you know, uh, you know, the Lord, the scripture said that the Lord eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So even with, you know, all these policies and legislations, you know, that uh, the so-called white man has put out secretly, hey, the Lord sees it all. You know, so don't don't think for one second that, you know, every, that everything that you're, you know, that you've done, you know, uh, you're going to be punished for it, man. You know, y'all brothers got it. Kind, kind. Real quick, I'm gonna grab a couple of precepts off the common board. Um, and and Shalom, how about you? How a shot by Shimon Kardak Das to all you Akim and uh, all you sincere listeners on the common board, man. Uh, man, how about you? How a shot bless you and your families, man. Um, we already got a couple of them. I'm gonna get this one right here from the brother uh, Righteous Judgment. This is Baruch 4 and 24. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from my power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness. Um, I, I can't, I can't see the us. Uh, 
next verse for me so we can finish it out. Uh, but it says, uh, once again, Baruch 4 and 24. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see surely your salvation from my power, which shall come upon you with great glory. And that's what's happening now. You see, um, just like just like this precept um, uh, uh, speaks to, that's that uh, 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 this team being named, you know, the so-called Washington Redskins is a a, a portion of uh, our captivity, man. It's it's a it's a a portion of the curses that have been placed upon our people, intruding the, the tribe of uh, the tribe of Gad, man. Mm -hmm. the next verse. I, I got. What do you got? Uh, Brute four and. That was twenty. That was twenty four, right? Yeah. It says, "Which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting." Verse twenty five. Mm -hmm. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the Most High. See, but even I with that, even with that, a portion of the uh, the wrath that happened to a uh, tribe of Gad was them being completely uh, taken over when, uh, by these these devils, man. Okay, by the nation of Edom. In which uh, we you know we we're familiar with the stories of what Edom Esau did with the tribe of Gad, man. You know and how and how they uh, dealt treacherously with them, how they uh, broke their covenants and, and their agreements, how they uh, used them for their their skill and know how how to work the land and and, and, uh, and things of that nature, and just uh, and, and and took and took over, you know, um, through through their deception, you know, uh, uh, how they uh, pushed them. And to, to uh, uh, unwanted corners of of the uh, of America on onto reservations and you know giving them little to no resources including you know food water education uh, things of that nature. This is all an extension of uh, of the curses that and it touched even the Northern Kingdom. Man, it's more than that, Khan, Con. It says, "For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction." And shall it tread upon his neck. See, surely, surely we shall see the destruction of Esau, of Esau Edom, man. And surely, beginning with our Lord, our Messiah, Yahweh Shai, well, we're going to tread upon their necks, man. And 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 the thing about it, the beautiful thing about it is, once we as a people, with the return of our Lord, our Messiah, Yahweh Shai, once we begin treading on their necks, we're going to keep treading on their necks, man. Okay, until they fully exterminate. We're gonna, it's going to be a, a, a continual, continual process of. Um, uh, uh, reclaiming and rededicating who the real redskin is, man. Which is a, which are you Edomites? <laughs> the water, bro. Anybody got anything else, real quick? Yeah, I got come. Yeah, I can grab some. Okay, y'all brothers hit it. Go ahead, Shamar. I'll go after you. Oh, come. This is real quick, you know, classic. This is uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience in the faith of the saints. See, we see we just have to be patient because our reward is coming, man. And that's and that's judgment for you, Edomites. Say for uh, all for all you other nations that took us uh the Israelites to slavery, man. Okay, you will be going to slavery according to the Bible, you know. And this is the patience in the faith of the saints, and the saints are the Israelites, according to Psalm chapter 148, verse 14. All right. So hey, the time, and you know it's a spiritual thing too. You know, you know. The times are close because the Lord is waking up the children of Israel, man. That's a that's a spiritual sign that we're we're close to the end. All right. <laughs> God, I got uh real quick. Uh, this is Psalms uh chapter 58 and verse 10. It says, The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, you know. So when we see the vengeance, you know, increase on our enemies, hey, we're gonna rejoice, you know. Because we just like you know the lesson, this particular lesson that we're going into now, and we're calling out all the filthiness and dirt, you know, that these heathens have done. To us. So when we see the payback that the Lord is going to put on them, hey, we're going to rejoice, man. You know, hey, every hey, even you know another thing that's going on in the NFL is they're making, you know, they're uh, speaking out against how it's not a lot of uh, uh, so-called black coaches in the NFL. You know, I believe it's 32 teams, I believe it's uh, one or two, uh, you know, head coaches, and they make it hard for uh, for uh, Jake to get these coaching jobs, man. You know, so all everything that the, the so-called white man has is doing at the dirt is being uh, is being revealed, man, as the scriptures say, man. You know, 
continuing on, it says, uh, verse, uh, it says, he shall, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, verily, there is reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a power that judgeth in the earth, man. So don't, like, like the brothers are making the statement before, don't think that for one second that the Lord, you know, isn't going to, isn't going to judge you, you know, for all the atrocities that you've committed, man, you know, and we and the righteous are going to rejoice because when you're getting your judgment, you know, which is going to be the death and destruction, the righteous on the other hand is going to get their judgment, which is their, which is the, uh, the salvation, man, you know? So that's why we are continuing to do the things what we were called to do, man. You know, y'all brothers got it. All right, Slacky. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get one more article and then we're gonna get into that and then, you know, begin to close out just for the essence of time. Uh, breaking news, fresh off the press, man. The brother uh, Righteous Judgment said, uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom, Keisha Lance Bottoms just tested positive for COVID-19. So, uh, you know, <laughs> that name got an omen to it because she got to sit a bottom down and be a quarantine for 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just want to put that out there, you know, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to get this next article and then we're going to begin to close it out. Actually. All right. OK, so this is. um. This is from the Washington Post. It says a brief history of the word redskin and how it became a source of controversy. We want to pick from it. You know, it says um, its origins extend back to the 18th century, long before it became the name of a football team. Uh, let's see. All right. The, the origin of the word redskin has long been disputed by linguists, Native American activists who consider it a slur were really uh, the tribe of Gad activists who consider it a slur and those who insist that the name of Washington's football team honors in, uh, Native Americans rather than disparages them. The word's roots extend back to at least the mid 18th century as a colonists and Native Americans began clashing. Here's a timeline. 1969, the first unchallenged use of the word redskin occurs when a British lieutenant colonel translate a letter from a, an Indian chief promising safe passage if the officer visited his tribe in upper Mississippi, Mississippi Valley. And that goes to show you too, man, don't be making no covenant with these Edomites, man. All right. If you're making any type of agreement with these Edomites, you know, do it with the, uh, the understanding that they're devils, man. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. You know, be users of the world, but not abusers. You know what I'm saying to uh you know to 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 benefit yourself, but always understand that you you know it's the devil, man. It says uh I continuing on, I shall be pleased to have you come to speak to me yourself if you pity our women and our children, and if any redskins do you harm, I shall be able to look out for you even at the peril of my life, Chief uh Mosquito Mosquito said in his letter, according to a 2005 study by Ives Goddard, the Smithsonian Senior Linguist Emeritus, in which, you know, this is the information that, you know, we have, you know, through Esau's uh, records and claims. You know, we was going off of this, but, you know, just going into the history of, of this word. Um, August 22nd, and also to show how far back this goes, man, and how far back this curse goes on a tribe of Gad. August 22nd, 1812, at a Washington reception for several Native Americans, President James Madison refers to Indians as red people or my red children, prompting little uh, uh, Osage Chief Sands Aureus, no ears, to voice his support for the administration. I know the manners of the whites and the redskins. Then Sioux Chief French Crow also pledged loyalty. I am a redskin, but what I say is the truth and notwithstanding, I came a long way. I am content, but wish to return from here. See, and they go to show you also why the tribe of God, the tribe of God fell, man, because they put on the covering, but not of the covering of Yahweh Shemayahu Shai, in which it goes to show you that they also are Israelites. 
because even their heritage, they fall away from their heritage, man. Okay, and uh, uh, and they, you know, to uh, seek to please the uh, Satan. Okay, they put on the moniker, uh, certain monikers that were outside of, the, of, of who they actually are, being a child of God. Hence, uh, their fall and destruction to this day. Um, I'm just going to probably grab one more. Uh, uh, one or two more. It says 1898. Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines redskin as often contemptuous, meaning what? That it causes strife and division. Um, I just wanted to get that. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh man, check this out, man. 1937. Marshall moves the team to Washington, D.C. and taps his wife, Corinne Griffith to write the lyrics of the team's fight song, Hail to the Redskins. It would take more than 30 years for the Redskins to change some of, some of the more controversial lyrics. Here are the lyrics. Hail to the Redskins, hail victory. Braves on the warpath, fight for old DC. Scalp them, swamp them, we will. Take them big score, read them, weep them, touchdown. We want heat more, fight on, fight on till you have won, sons of Washington. Rah, 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 hail to the Redskins, hail victory. Braves on the warpath, fight for ODC. You see? And hey. go ahead, I, If I could say if it real. Hold on, hold on. Slacky, slacky, slacky. Uh, go ahead. Oh, slacky. Uh, a lot of people know too that that name, uh, Redskins, come from the uh, they used to scout, uh, or, or, or chop the scout of the uh, Indians, man, of Gad. You know, and they, and they would call them Redskins. So in the song, it said, uh, if if the officer can, can pull it back up, it said, scout them. You know, oh. so that's a, that's give another. Me, give me, uh, give me uh, one second. I'm going to back up. Huh. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that that part again. Um, yeah, it says, uh, hail victory. Braves on the warpath. Fight for old D.C. Scalp them, swamp them. We will. Take them big score. You got it. Yeah. So uh, the the heathens used to scout. You know the uh, they. Used, I think uh, if you brothers ever seen uh, the movie in uh, Inglorious Bastards, it wasn't the Indians, but it shows you how they would uh, scout the uh, the top of the head. You know, and there was a, and that's another uh, reason why they call them Redskins. You know, and even with. Uh, you know, because we calling all of it out. They uh they had they also this I believe it was this year or this past year, you know, they uh made a petition, you know, for uh you know, for the Tomahawk here for um the Braves, you know, in the playoff in the playoff series, they discontinued the uh Tomahawk because it's uh another thing that's you know derogatory to the uh Native Americans, man. You know, so this is you know just basically going to uh was that Ezekiel thirty seven chapter on how both the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom is coming back together to that true power, man. You know, so y'all both got it. Con, con. And, if, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it might have been like game seven or something like that, where they said they're not going to do the tomahawk. Them niggas end up losing, man. <laughs> you could tell, you could tell like once, like once they lost like that, that power to like that energy to, to feed that, that spirit. The team, the team wasn't even the same. The team won't even the same, yo. Like they, you could tell they was gonna lose that game from the from the very beginning, man. <laughs> but uh, brother, got any closing precepts? And then uh, brother, hope for me, uh, just forty nine on deck. I want to close just forty nine. Uh, well, you got Genesis forty nine and nineteen. I'm I'm gonna close with that. Oh, that's the one I had. All right, never mind. All right, so anybody, any other precepts? I got one. Hit it. This is uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 6. It says, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. All right, so that's that's what we're going to do to you Edomites in the kingdom of heaven, man. You you you, you damn devils, uh, like the brothers were going into, you used to uh, scout uh, Gadites, man. We're going to do worse than that, man. All right? And, Anything, anything you could you could think of that, that this damn devil did, man. We're gonna do worse. And uh, uh reading on, it says, "And the cup which she had filled filled to her double." All right, so we're gonna do double what you did to us, man, in the kingdom. 
All right. That's all I have. Slacking. Uh, anything else? Uh, we can close that Genesis 49 and not. All right, this is uh Genesis uh 49 and 19. Gad. Right, hey, Bobby Gushaw started uh started 18. Yeah, come on. All right, Genesis 49, 18. I had waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. See, and this is biblical prophecy, man. All right, Romans 3 and 3. Whether y'all whether the hearer of this message, believe it or not. It don't fucking matter, okay? At the end of the day, according to biblical prophecy, Gad and uh, is spiritual because Gad means truth. A truth shall overcome him, but what? In the end, he shall overcome at the last, man. And uh, it's important. It's important for us to also um, highlight and highlight these particular instances because it's not just the the, the name of the team. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a spiritual sign that uh uh um. The, the the vice grips of control that Esau Edom has on Gad is is uh loosening up, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, how about you? Yo, enough of that shit, man. All right, change, change our fucking name. And this and this is uh evidence that uh uh we can we should expect uh Gad to begin to wake up, okay, and to overcome through the through not not through necessarily uh carnal weapons but through the spiritual weapons man the same weaponry and armory and shield and buckler that we have through the understanding of the holy scriptures by the uh, holy spirit our brother gad is about to get the same thing man and we and we excited about that man you know um anything else i can huh. okay so with that we're gonna close it out before we close um we want to give all praise and glory to yahweh by shim shai by shim Double honors to our apostles, our elders, great millstone, who lead, teach, and rule well. Love and honor to fellow occupants, the word of truth, faith, and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, peace, and blessings to the sincere listeners who listen and subscribe to the men, Dr. Great Millstone. We hope and pray that you will edify this lesson. Until next time, Shalom.